This is Rick Wiles. If you've never seen this guy before, he has some absolutely bizarre takes. Some of his most famous takes are he believes that the vaccine is actually a synthetic egg that hatches a parasite into your body and all kinds of crazy stuff, dude. Absolutely nuts. I haven't actually watched his stuff on this channel before, like True News. I haven't watched long form videos of him. This will be the first. So I'm pretty interested to see what he has to say in this. The title of this one is, Here's Why the Corrupt FBI Raided President Trump's Home. So it's bound to be fascinating. He is a pastor, a preacher, and he has preached an interest in revolution, to say the least. A revolution probably isn't even quite the right word for it. Dude is absolutely nutty, to say the least. But let's just give this a watch, see what he has to say for himself here, while we play some Breath of the Wild. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. This is true news, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help us God, I'm... Not quite. Rick Wiles, why did the Biden regime dispatch 20 to 30 armed FBI agents to Palm Beach, Florida on Monday to... Because Donald Trump stole classified documents. If you're unfamiliar with this whole situation, Donald Trump stole classified documents, the, one of the highest levels of classification, and refused to give them back when the Department of Justice and the National Archives specifically requested them back. He refused to give them back. So they go in and they retrieved him, naturally, and they charged him, or they're investigating him under the Espionage Act. That's a quick and dirty explanation raid the private residence of former President Donald Trump. What were they really searching for? What did they expect to find? Exactly what was on the warrant. And if they found anything other than what the warrant specified, then they couldn't use it in any way. I can't believe I have to say this, but this guy is obsessed with conspiracies. So naturally, he can't let things just be what they are. The lying news media is telling you part of the story. True News will tell you the rest of the story. And how did True News discover the rest of the story? Get ready. True News is ready to begin. And I'm going to begin with a short video that was uh, posted by the Washington Examiner several years ago. Okay, the Washington Examiner, if you don't know what that is, absolutely insane. Think Fox News, but even crazier. It's absolutely unhinged. I believe it's a written paper, mostly. Uh, it, it's like a, a news website or whatever. They don't do very many. As far as I know, they don't do any like live broadcasting. I mean, they may have the occasional reporter go out and supposed quote-unquote reporter go out on scene and talk to people, but... The Washington Examiner is a far-right extremist newspaper. And it features uh, former Congressman Devin Nunes, who at that at time, he was, uh, he was the former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, uh, now ruled by that liar, Adam Schiff. And in this video, uh, Congressman Nunes briefly talked about a... FBI operation to entrap President Trump. Let's watch. For those who... Yeah, Devin Nunes used to be in Congress. Donald Trump hired him to be the CEO of his Truth Social, social media company or whatever. That's what he does now. The guy is a propagandist to the core and absolutely terrible in every way, honestly. Has been since he was in Congress. He's just terrible, but we'll get there. Keep listening here. For those who have not been following, what exactly is Crossfire Hurricane? Oh, well, it was uh, started, it was an FBI counterintelligence investigation uh, into the Trump campaign. And it started, uh, well, officially started end of July 2016. That's not actually correct. Crossfire Hurricane is actually the name of a like an FBI operation or whatever. I don't want to get anything wrong with this. It's important I get it exactly right. So let me just read about this and remember. It was the code name for counterintelligence investigation undertaken by the FBI from July 31st, 2016, which is... Wait, is that before... Trump was inaugurated January 2017, right? 
to January 2021. So this is before Trump actually took office. To May 17th, 2017, into myriad links between Russian officials and associates of Donald Trump, and whether individuals associated with his presidential campaign were coordinating, wittingly or unwittingly, with the Russian government's efforts to interfere in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Trump was not personally under investigation until May 2017, when his firing of FBI Director James Comey raised suspicions of obstruction of justice, which triggered the Mueller investigation. And the Mueller investigation determined that Trump was involved in all of this, but Mueller was under the opinion that a sitting president couldn't be indicted for something. He believed that the process to p basically punish a sitting president was impeachment, not indictment. So he did not recommend indictment for Trump for that reason, basically. So Crossfire Hurricane is just an FBI investigation into the links between Trump officials and and Russian interference. Sorry, couldn't come up with the right word there. It was completely above board. And I believe the thing that inspired the investigation in the first place is that the FBI, the CIA and other groups monitor people who they believe to be like Russian spies. They monitor Russian spies and stuff on a regular basis, monitor communications with foreign actors and stuff on a regular basis. And weirdly, Donald Trump campaign officials kept coming up in those conversations that they were monitoring. Like they're just monitoring normal phone calls of these Russian spies and Donald Trump's campaign officials just happened to call these people out of the blue. That's why the investigation started in the first place. It was not a plot to take out the president or whatever other nonsense he wants to make it out to be. While then President Trump was a candidate. Uh, now the reality is, is that that investigation, you've probably heard me say this numerous times, but that's not true. It's a lie. It actually started much before that and we don't know if it was six months or some people think it could have been 2015. what no it was july 2016 this is all pretty out in the open now uh, but for sure it was started early 2016. so it doesn't mean it had an official name of crossfire hurricane but the bottom line is is that they were spying on the trump campaign and targeting the trump campaign no they were spying on russian officials and for some bizarre reason, Trump campaign officials kept calling them. That's why this whole thing was started in the first place. Uh, in early 2016, and then they opened an umbrella investigation that they called, called Crossfire Hurricane in the middle of 2016. Well, for several years, we said that the FBI and other government agencies were spying on President Donald Trump. In fact, they started spying on him maybe as early as 2015. When no, they didn't spy on Donald Trump or his campaign. They were spying on Russian agents and stuff. And bizarrely, Trump officials just kept appearing. Seriously, why were they appearing in these Russian spies, like phone logs and stuff? That's weird, isn't it? I don't know any Russian spies, I don't think. Aside from that, whether you claimed that or not back in 2015 is irrelevant. You did not have the justification to make those claims. There's no reason to believe it at that time. If you were correct, it was by pure chance. You had no reason to believe this stuff at the time, seriously. He announced his candidacy for the Republican nomination. Uh, for several years, the news media laughed mocked yes. President Trump for saying that the FBI spied on him. And uh, it's because they didn't. The news media had a field day with uh, late night comedians making jokes about it and uh, all kinds of uh, memes. Uh, public well, actually, the claim is that Hillary Clinton spied on Trump's campaign. That is flat out false. Now, the FBI spied on Russian agents and Trump, for some reason, kept coming up in those investigations. And then they launched the Mueller probe into, you know, why that was happening. That's not a conspiracy. That's not illegal or any of that stuff. Like, everything was done above board. But, okay, keep congratulating yourself for being wrong about something back then and continuing to be wrong about it now. Published on the internet, making fun of the idea that the FBI would spy on President Trump. Well, it turned out they did spy on him. 
Not really. And um, I think we're going to find out they're still spying on President Trump. I want to show you another short video. This was uh, produced, released by the Wall Street Journal. Um, I think maybe I think it was at the beginning of this year. Yes, um, in February of this it's year. It's February of this year. They're talking about the same subject, the FBI operation to destabilize the Trump administration. Let's watch it. It is stunning. It is damning. It is salacious. Oh, dude, Lindsey Graham is absolutely terrible. He sucks up to pretty much anybody who has any amount of power whatsoever. And at this moment, he believes that Donald Trump has power, so he sucks up to him. It's honestly embarrassing. For a while, he sucked up to John McCain. He was like best friends with him, followed him around like a puppy dog until McCain passed away. Then it became Trump. And honestly, McCain would be disgusted at the idea that Lindsey Graham was Donald Trump's lapdog. Absolutely disgusted. McCain hated Donald Trump, rightfully so. And it's a bunch of crap. First came U.S. Special Counsel John Durham's revelations about the Clinton campaign engineer to steal dossier. Oh boy. God, this is stuff that I don't know a lot about, but I know a little bit about it. So hopefully I can muddle my way through this. John Durham is a, a prosecutor, I believe, who was investigating this whole FBI is spying on Trump thing. The right heard that John Durham had filed some indictments and mistakenly ran with the idea that Durham believed that Hillary Clinton was spying on Trump's campaign and stuff. And it was all nonsense. It was not accurate. He was not being spied on by Hillary Clinton and all of that stuff. But when they say John Durham, they're absolutely obsessed with this great prosecutor who's fighting for the right people and blah, blah, blah. It's all nonsense. Now, new filings in the Durham investigation allege Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign engaged techies to access internet traffic connected to the White House and to the Trump Tower to help create its Russian collusion narrative. That's not actually accurate at all. That is not what the Durham report supposed. It's not what the Durham report claimed at all. But that's the right wing claim about what the Durham report claimed. It's completely inaccurate. Now we know 100% John Durham's revelation, John Durham's filing here. Yep, there was spying going on, and it was worse than we thought. Because Of course, there's always spying going on of all different sorts of people. Yes, of course there was. That's what the FBI, the CIA, and the NSA do. They spy. Is this news to anybody? Were they spying on Donald Trump illegally? No. Was Hillary Clinton spying on Trump's campaign illegally? No. She wasn't spying on it at all. It was just completely fabricated. They were monitoring information and some stuff came through that they turned over to the FBI. That doesn't mean she was spying on anybody specifically or trying to whatever. It's just complete nonsense. They were spying on the sitting president of the United States. John Durham. They were not. This indictment of former Perkins Coie lawyer Michael Sussman, who represented the Clinton campaign, centers on a false statement he made to the FBI. But the details in the Durham filings revealed Clinton associates were engaged in a vast, dirty tricks campaign. Tech Executive One tasked these researchers to mine internet data to establish, quote, an inference and, quote, narrative tying then candidate Trump to Russia. Dude, what are they quoting? There's no there's no source on this. They're just quoting what? What are they quoting? I don't know. Wall Street Journal opinion? Is that what they're quoting? Okay, this is weird. It's all complete nonsense. It's all persecution. It's basically persecution porn. They're trying to make it out like they're like Trump is the most mistreated person alive and you know, everybody hates him and he's just trying to do right by the country. It's crazy, dude. Come on, pull it together, people. Today, Trump to Russia. Reads a segment of the special counsel's filing, which goes on to say. In doing so, Tech Executive One indicated that he was seeking to please certain, quote, VIPs, referring to individuals at law firm One and the Clinton campaign. The filings show that the Clinton campaign was involved not just in feeding the bogus Steele dossier and the Sussman allegations to the FBI, but also... Okay, if you don't know what the Steele dossier is, I believe that this is like an alleged dossier. Nobody knew if it existed or not, and I'm not completely convinced that it does. I don't know. Supposedly, it was a dossier, a Russian dossier on Trump. I'm sure they have one of those, but I don't know if it was from Steele or not. 
And in the dossier, people alleged that there was a tape of Trump, you know, using the bathroom on somebody or something or like that. I don't know how else to say it. Like I said, I'm not convinced that tape exists. I'm sure, you know, Russia or Putin has a dossier on Trump, just like the U.S. government has a dossier on Putin. But I don't know that it's real. Like, I don't know that anybody actually got a hold of it like they're claiming. Internet snooping. Tech executive one and his associates exploited this arrangement. Writes Mr. Durham in the filing. By mine. Number one. Somebody said using the bathroom. Number one or number two. Number one. Number oneing on somebody in a Russian hotel, basically the EOP's DNS traffic and other data for the purpose of gathering derogatory information about Donald Trump. The attorney general at the time said that Trump had been spied on and everybody dismissed that as uh, hyperbole. Yes, I think spying did occur. That is exactly what happened here. Wow, I love how it's completely out of context and we don't actually know what he was talking about. Like what spying on who? When? Like, none of the answers to these questions matter. All that matters is they could get that little sound clip and put it exactly where they want it to go. We can, we have to make sure it never happens again. In response to the latest revelations, Donald Trump issued a statement that reads in part, This is a scandal far greater in scope and magnitude than Watergate, and those who were involved in and knew about this spying operation should be subject to criminal prosecution. Pulitzer Prizes were awarded for fake reporting on a fake investigation into fake activities. You know, this is, I, I think, truly worse than Watergate. Watergate was a bunch of ham-fisted burglars, you know, up to sort of political dirty tricks. This is spying on an American president. The mainstream media. Dude, these people are absolutely obsessed with making Trump out to be a victim of epic proportions. Like, anything they can do to portray Trump as the most victimized and mistreated person in, hu in U.S. history. Ridiculous, man. Aside from that, there really wasn't any spying like they're making out here. It it's all fabricated nonsense. Media continues to largely ignore the findings of the Durham investigation. This is the same press that spent years pushing the Democratic Party's Trump-Russia collusion narrative and all its subsequent fallout. I mean, they destroyed my career, my reputation, um, cost me, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees with the Mueller investigation. So the media, they don't want to touch this because they're complicit in it. If the Rep Okay, the Mueller investigation was not a hoax, not fake or whatever else. It was an actual investigation that actually turned up real information and recovered more money than it cost in the first place. Turned up like 34 indictments or something like that. And the only reason Trump wasn't one of those indictments is because Mueller believed that a sitting president shouldn't be indicted. Simple as that. Republican Party regains control of the House in the midterms. Mike Turner is likely to become the chair of the House Intelligence Committee. And speaking to Fox News' Maria Bartiromo, he promised to hold hearings into the Durham findings. This is a threat to our democracy itself. You know, this is exactly what's going to happen when Republicans retake the House. They're going to be like a billion hearings into, you know, all of the ridiculous nonsense. Of course, they're not going to find anything because there isn't anything there. Like the Durham report wasn't what they were claiming that it was. It was never, you know, an indictment of Hillary Clinton. Oh, she spied on his campaign or whatever. Like, they're not going to find the evidence they're looking for because it doesn't exist. But they're going to make everyone's lives miserable in the process. So, I think we're going to present to you today the real reason the FBI was at the Trump residence on Monday. Oh, please do. I love it. Uh, they were searching for something. And what they were searching for was your mom was not what the media wants you to believe, even though the media is being very coy in describing the purpose. Right. Once you see and hear what we're presenting here today, you'll read between the lines. You'll you'll catch the the. Uh, so extrapolate is what he's saying. We have no reason to believe this stuff, but if you just extrapolate with no evidence, it'll make sense to you too. Hence, that the news media is giving us because they know, they know, but they can't say because they're in on the crimes. Right. 
Wow, the media is in on the crimes, okay. They're part of the criminal operation and they have to cover up their involvement in what they did to Donald J. Trump and to the American people. Now, the next story I wanna to go to, this is January 2021. Trump declassifies crossfire hurricane material to show origins of Russia probe. Wait, January 2021? Okay, so that's the very end of his presidency. So this is like, he had like three weeks remaining in January to be president. And they're saying that he declassified the crossfire stuff. I don't like, don't trust a single word out of this guy's mouth, by the way, not one. Because it's very likely that every word out of his mouth is a lie. And I don't know which ones are true and which ones aren't. So be extremely cautious when accepting anything he, sa he has to say. And we've got a couple quotes from this article again. January 19, 21, the day before he leaves office, he left the White House. Right. So in his final full day in office, President Donald Trump says he has declassified information related to the FBI's investigation into ties between Russia and his 2016 presidential campaign. He did not reveal what the information was Tuesday, except to say that it was included in a binder of materials that the Justice Department had provided to the White House at his request late last month. Now, it goes on to say in this article that the material being declassified relates to Crossfire Hurricane the FBI's code name for the investigation that began in 2016 into whether the Trump campaign was coordinating with Russia to tip the election. The declassification move is part of a continuing effort by Trump. And okay, I'm assuming that he did eventually declassify this stuff or we wouldn't know its code name or anything else about it, right? I mean, I don't know that for sure. It just seems logical to think he probably did declassify it. But the fact that, like, nobody is being prosecuted or even investigated or anything like that over the Russian probe and all that stuff tells me that it was probably all above board. I mean, I haven't seen any questionable anything about Crossfire Hurricane. His allies, including in Congress, to release information aimed at discrediting the Russia probe. Uh, Mr. Trump says he has accepted redactions proposed by the FBI, which had objected to the declassification. The practical impact of the declassification order was unclear, given that Trump leaves office on Wednesday. Now, remember, this is back January 19th, 2021, uh, that we're reading this article. So the day before he leaves office, he declassifies the crossfire hurricane uh, information after it had gone through several back and forth yes. with the Department of Justice, some redactions that had been uh, suggested, and in fact... And uh, the FBI did not want it released at all. Right. And that was the second time President Trump declassified these documents. Yeah, it makes sense that they wouldn't want it declassified at all, because if they declassified anything to do with like Russian intelligence, it becomes obvious how they found that information in the first place, which puts everybody at risk who worked on this. They could have received this information from People who literally live in Russia and work in the Kremlin building, for all we know. They could have received information from full-blown spies, for all we know. And declassifying it would put those people at risk. That's why it, it's a bad idea to declassify pretty much anything. Not because the information itself is important or valuable or anything. It could be completely pointless. It could be meaningless information, like where Putin's girlfriend went on vacation but how we got that information could be deeply important what if that information came from like putin's secretary or something i got that example from bow of the fifth column it's important that we keep things classified for as long as possible on some occasions because we don't want to tip our hand and give up what we know or how we know it basically he had declassified them earlier and and he was defied by two of his Attorneys General, right? they refused to follow his instruction. The last one was Mr. Barr. Right. So I want to go back to uh, the first quote from that article. That was number four. And I want you to see one word in there. Um, third sentence from the bottom, except to say that it was included in a binder of materials. 
There's your clue. It was included in a binder of materials. Okay, I, I'm not seeing why this is relevant or important. Now let's go to uh, our next still. This is number seven. This is the actual White House document. Yes. I obtained this from uh, the White House website, Memorandum on Declassification of Certain Materials Related to the FBI's Crossfire Hurricane Investigation. And we're going to read part of President Trump's memorandum that he signed the day before he left the White House. All right, so it starts off section one, declassification and release. And this is President Trump. At my request on December 30th, 2020, the Department of Justice provided the White House with a binder of materials related to the Federal Bureau of Investigation's Crossfire Hurricane Investigation. Portions of the documents in the binder have remained classified and have not been released to the Congress or the public. I requested the documents so that a declassification review could be performed and so I could determine to what extent materials in the binder should be released in unclassified form. Now, he also says, I determined that the materials in that binder should be de declassified to the maximum extent possible. In response, and as part of the iterative process of the declassification review, under a cover letter dated January 17, 2021, the FBI noted its continuing objection to any further declassification of the materials in the binder, and also, on the basis of a review that included intelligence community equities, identified the passages that it believed it was most crucial to keep from public disclosure. I have determined to accept the redactions proposed for continued declassification by the FBI in that January 17th submission. And now, I hereby classify the remaining materials in the binder, declassify. This is my final determination under the declassification review, and I have directed the Attorney General to implement the redactions proposed in the FBI's January 17th submission and return to the White House an appropriately redacted copy. Okay, so this is really interesting. What they're doing here is basically describing the redaction process or the declassification process, right? So Donald Trump claimed originally when, you know, these binders or these boxes of classified files were found in his house by the FBI, Trump claimed that he had a standing order to declassify everything that he took out of the White House. It doesn't work that way. They're, what they're doing here is describing the process. Trump has full authority to declassify anything he wants, except for certain things like nuclear information, for example. He can't declassify those types of things. But he has to give the order, and then a process begins of declassification. He has full authority to declassify it, but there is a process that takes place afterward. And in that process, people have the opportunity to talk to him about the decision and protest and they also have to actually do the declassifying so they have to redact anything that is unnecessary or, or that could put people at risk I mean, trump could say no redactions if he wanted but he has to specify that and then they have to basically make a copy of it that removes the classified banner like the he the classified headers and footers on the papers the original pieces of paper that originally said classified on it they're still classified but you're allowed to make a copy of that paper that removes the header and the footer that says classified and that copy that doesn't say it are no longer classified from my understanding that's how it works so anything that says classified on it is classified plain and simple you are allowed to declassify it by making a copy that removes the header and footer that says classified that's my understanding of the process and they're kind of describing that process here interestingly enough and that's from the memorandum that he issued the day before he left office basically in order to uh uh, make sure that these documents were published. Now, Rick, let me ask you a question. Was that binder ever published? No. Uh, and to this day, it's not been published. Uh, in that memorandum, several times he referred to the binder. Folks, this is the key. The binder. This is the clue of why the FBI raided Mar-a-Lago on Monday. 
Okay. We first of all, we don't know actually what was in the boxes that Donald Trump took to Mar-a-Lago. It sounds to me like they're saying that Crossfire Hurricane was the only thing that he took with him, which is simply factually wrong. We know he, at the very least, took letters that he and Kim Jong-un had between each other. He took those to Mar-a-Lago, and back in, I think, January or February, maybe, of 2021, or sometime, I don't remember exactly when, the National Archives went in and retrieved those boxes, and he gave them up willingly, but he hid other boxes that he was not supposed to have, and... This is stuff that's like the highest level of classification in existence. Extremely sensitive information. This isn't Crossfire Hurricane level stuff that he took with him. This is nuclear codes level stuff, seriously. It's very, very sensitive information that he took. So, you know, Rick Wiles is just full of it here. It sounds to me like he's trying to pretend that Trump only took a single binder with him and that single binder was something he already declassified. That's a just you're living in a delusional world the binder just keep thinking about that the binder okay so by the way if you're watching us on uh, cable television or direct TV uh, we will be doing the first part of the program dude what is he on cable TV oh my god I had no idea I'm gonna have to cover him more often the first 28 minutes uh, the second 28 minutes will be at our website. So if you want to hear the rest of what we are talking about, you'll have to go to truenews.com, T-R-U-N-E-W-S, truenews.com. This is an industrial strength news analysis program. Uh, this is for people who put on their big boy pants and can handle the truth. Wow. Okay. Well, it sounds like I'm putting on my big boy pants, huh? I didn't know that before. Now that I know that it's for big boy pants only, maybe I'll have to buy a pair. I've been wearing little boy pants this whole time. And so we're telling you today why the FBI carried out the unprecedented, outrageous raid on the home of a former president of the United States. Just keep those two words in mind. The binder. Will do, buckaroo. The binder. The binder. Now. So fast forward to earlier this year. Yes. Uh, February of this year, Senator Grassley's office issued a statement. Chuck Grassley is the pro tempor of the House of Representatives, I think, of Congress, anyways. Basically, he's the longest serving member, I believe, which makes him very influential. He is a Republican, and he's a terrible person who assisted in the January 6th coup. Uh, regarding the Biden administration's continuing to conceal the declassified crossfire hurricane records. And so at that time and up to now, uh, that has not been published as of yet. Now, Senator Grassley's office said this, more than a year after then-President Trump directed details of the government's crossfire hurricane investigation to be declassified, the Justice Department continues to hide those important records. So God, I'm standing there jumping in the fire because I was trying to take off, and I totally forgot I don't even have the thing yet. I don't even have the uh, parasailer thing or whatever. Judiciary Committee Ranking Member Chuck Grassley and Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations Ranking Member Ron Johnson today are calling on the department to promptly comply with the declassification directive. We remain concerned that over a year from the date that then President Trump directed the Justice Department to declassify certain crossfire hurricane records, the Justice Department has not only failed to declassify a single page, the department has failed to identify for Congress records that it knows with certainly certainty to be covered by the declassification directive. The senators wrote in a letter to Attorney General Merrick Garland. So who wrote that? Chuck Grassley? I mean, again, you don't trust a word that this guy says. Not one word. He is living in a delusional fantasy land that's completely disconnected from the world that everyone else lives in. He makes up his own facts and works them into his own bizarre narrative. So, you know, I can't trust anything the guy says, but I'm trying to follow, like, the whole story he's trying to lay down for us anyway. And so up to even today... They have not published those materials. Doc, my, uh, my hunch is that the moment Joe Biden was sworn in 
as president on January 20th, 2021. They had waiting on him, the FBI. I think they handed him a document. Notice the words that he used just now. I think, I think. That's important. He, that means he has no basis to believe this. He's just assuming it. A memorandum to reclassify the binder. And to, so that would mean that anyone that had that binder after that time was is in, in is in possession of classified class. documents. Okay, well, first of all, even if that were true, that's the president's right. The president has full authority to declassify anything he wants. And just because it's declassified does not mean that it's released to the public. You know, you, you have no obligation to send anything out to be read by anybody who wants to read it. You get it now? You understand what they're after? Oh, he is claiming this. Wow, I didn't actually expect him to make this claim, but he's claiming that the binder that had information about Operation Crossfire or whatever, that is the seemingly the only thing that Donald Trump owned that was classified, and it wasn't classified when he took it out. Biden just reclassified it. Fascinating. Well, the thing is, it's not considered classified until they remove the classified header and footer and paper, like, stamp on the boxes and everything. They have to print a brand new, unclassified copy of a paper before it's considered declassified, from my understanding. The boxes that the FBI took out of Mar-a-Lago still had those stamps on them, so whether Trump claims they were classified or not, doesn't matter. They weren't. Whether he told people to classify them or not, doesn't matter. They weren't declassified because they still had the headers, the footers, and the stamps on the boxes. They were classified. Those specific documents were classified. President Trump took the binder with him. He has no idea. Did you notice, like, uh, there was a lot of I think and I believe language in what he was saying. He has no idea what was in the documents that Trump took with him. He has no idea about whether Biden reclassified or declassified or anything at all. He doesn't know. He's assuming. He's guessing. And we have no reason to believe that it was just the Operation Crossfire stuff, Crossfire Hurricane stuff that Trump took with him. In fact, we have reason to believe it was more than that. Specifically, we just watched a video earlier on stream of Eric Trump admitting to what was in the boxes that Donald Trump took out of the White House. On Friday, they got the search warrant. They didn't exercise that search warrant until midday Monday. So you mean to tell me the FBI um, has such an important uh, barbecue schedule on the weekend that if nuclear codes were compromised, that uh, they wouldn't have got in immediately after getting the search warrant? Of course not. The interesting thing here is that he knows exactly what was in those boxes, I'm sure, right? He he must. It was his dad. It was his house, right? It was his mansion that was searched, his stuff. I would have a hard time believing Eric Trump didn't know exactly what was in those boxes after everything. Guys, this is all a sham. Yeah. America doesn't believe it. There's only yeah. so many times you can... So anyways, uh, there's a lot more to that story with Eric Trump. And if you're curious, then just go watch the video on it that I did recently that just released. But it seemed to me that he was implying that, you know, there was a lot of nuclear information in the documents that Trump had that that he brought to Mar-a-Lago with him. So right there is evidence enough to me to say that Rick Wiles's assumption that only the Crossfire Hurricane binder was at Mar-a-Lago and literally no other classified document, that's completely made up. But when he took it, it was declassified. Yes. But they reclassified it the moment he left the White House. Yeah, it's, a complete, uh, it's a completely nonsensical argument, but even if it were true, it doesn't matter. This stuff was classified, and he had it, and it had the classified header and footer and stamp on the box. That's what really matters. They never published a doc. They never published the documents. They immediately reclassified it. He departed the White House with the binder, thinking it's declassified. No, he didn't think it was declassified because it didn't say declassified on it. 
to be declassified, it has to say declassified. And the classified footer and header need to be removed. Trump knew full well, if this were true, which it's not, but if it were, Trump would have known full well that it was not declassified. It's not declassified until the header and footer are removed. By the time he got to Florida, it was reclassified. And he is now in possession of classified documents. And he's got the evidence on the crimes of the FBI. He's got names. It's not how it works. He has names of who did what in criminal operations against him. He has enough evidence in that binder to put these lying, deceiving FBI and Justice Department officials in prison the rest of their lives. Dude, I love it how these people are always claiming, you know, they have the evidence and all these people have evidence. Greg Locke says he has the evidence. Rick Wiles says he's got evidence. He's got pictures and videos of these people doing these terrible things. Uh, but he's not going to turn it over yet. You know, they're just going to sit on it. Donald Trump has the evidence to get, you know, a ton of people put away for life uh, to drain the swamp. But he's just going to sit on it. You know, why not? Right. Why not? Just sit on it. I mean, who cares? These are people that Trump deeply, deeply hates, can't stand, disgusted by these people. They're they're Democrats. They're evil liberals. And he has evidence to put them away for life. And instead of doing so, he's just sitting on it. This guy's most basic logical functions are not working. Something is short circuiting here. But I mean, you remember who we're talking about here, though. Rick Wiles, he's the same guy who claims that the vaccine has like a parasite in it that hatches out of an egg. And, you know, what? let me just play that clip so you guys have context for what I'm talking about. Mid-October 2021. This is a global coup d'etat by the most evil cabal of people on the planet in the history of mankind. And if it is not stopped in the very near future, they will win. That's what's at stake, control of the world. They're planting, they're putting eggs in people's bodies. We, if you didn't see yesterday's True News, you need to watch it. It's an egg that hatches into a synthetic parasite and grows inside your body. This is like a sci-fi nightmare. And it's happening in front of us. No, no, it's not. You live in a delusional fantasy land. This guy owns a gigantic media company called True News, and he is he can be found apparently on Direct TV. He has a TV channel, okay? Bigger than InfoWars if he has a TV channel. Um, maybe not bigger, but he has a lot of reach that he absolutely should not have. Seriously, that's why we got to talk about him. They're turning this on him. Right. Because they reclassified it. And now they raided his home on the on the suspicion that he is in possession of classified information. Well, first of all, they were correct. And second, they asked for the documents back. He gave them some of the boxes and hid the rest, refused to give them the rest. If he had just handed the stuff over when they asked for it, he wouldn't be in this pickle. Seriously. Yes, he is. It could put them in prison. Right. It, it, the whole story regarding if it could put him in prison, why didn't he turn it over immediately? Like, why is he acting like Trump is some gigantic whistleblower that is just waiting for the right moment to turn it over or whatever? It's just nonsense, dude. Seriously, there's no logic to be found here. The uh, raid on Mar-a-Lago, the one thing that stood out to me was they uh, got into his safe. Now, if I'm a billionaire, what would I what would I have in my safe? The most certainly not. Money, uh, why would you keep physical money? Maybe gold, I guess. Uh, but even then, why? You would use like a Swiss bank or some bank that's like equipped to handle that much money. And honestly, you wouldn't even have that much money in your account anyways. If you're a billionaire, your money is all tied up in stocks. Almost certainly. That's the case with pretty much every billionaire out there. And that's how they grow their fortune. Important 
you know, things I need. Maybe some cash, a little bit of cash. He doesn't uh, operate in that realm. He's beyond cash. But you'd take the most important things that you possess, and they'd be in that safe. And so... I hope he did a, a Mike Murdoch on him. Uh, and the fake safe? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, is there anyone else out there that is, you know, looking at this particular angle, Rick, that's looking at this particular, uh, you know, uh, journey down yes. this road of investigation. Yes. The, the, the person that we got a, uh, credit here today is investigative uh, journalist Paul Sperry. Uh, Paul Sperry is a, a, a gentleman I uh, respect a lot. Uh, when he reports something, you can, you can take it to the bank. And so he is the first person that began to uh, speculate that what they were after were the documents related to Crossfire Hurricane. Why are you believing anything that a journalist is speculating? There shouldn't be speculation in journalism, right? There should be hard evidence. And until there's hard evidence, it should remain speculation and in your head and nowhere else, seems to me. Should not reach the public until it's more than speculation. And... and uh, he, he made some, uh, he did some tweets and immediately he was shut down. And that's, to me, is the, the evidence yes. that he's on to something. So we're going to show you the first. Wow. Uh, somebody says something absolutely ridiculous and crazy with no evidence. And people call him out for that and say you have no evidence for it. And that's the evidence I needed to believe him. Uh, from Paul Sperry. Right, that, so. Now, you can't get this on, on Twitter now. Right. You, fortunately, uh, some people saved it. Right. But Paul Sperry's account no longer exists at, in Twitter land. Well, let's read this. So this was yesterday around noon, and uh, Paul Sperry reports, developing investigators reportedly met back in June with Trump and his lawyers in Mar-a-Lago storage room to survey docs and things, and things seemed copacetic, but then FBI raids weeks later. Speculation on Hill, FBI had personal stake in searching for classified documents related to its Spygate scandal. There you go. Yeah, so there you go. The guy was speculating it, and he even said this was a speculation, and there's no reason to believe any of this. We have no evidence for it. Donald Trump didn't even suggest that. And Trump is famous for his fire hose of falsehoods propaganda technique, where he just throws out anything he can come up with on the spot and see which things stick. This wasn't even one of those things. Insane. Insane that anybody actually believes this. All right, that's where I'm going to call it for now. Uh, this guy is absolutely insane. It's absolutely nuts, some of the stuff Rick Wiles says. I, I, I have no idea how he comes to some of these conclusions, but I will be damned if they're not entertaining as hell to listen to. But I'll tell you what, if you want to see more stuff about Rick Wiles, let me know in the comments or on Twitter at Telltale Atheist. There was apparently somebody on YouTube in the YouTube chat that is a Rick Wiles fan. Bepiak? Bepiak? Without seeing this, Rick Wiles has more information and has done more research than you've been alive. I get it. You're peddling your opinions and you and you dig hearing yourself calling others stupid. I don't call people stupid. Uh, well, I have, but I try not to desperately. I feel like that's, first of all, lowbrow and second, a coarsening of discourse. And if I complain about it when Trump does it, then I can't in good conscience do it either. So anyway.